I think the best way to introduce this game is just to play the first minute of the opening sequence, so I'll do that now. The future is you. Your passion. Your imagination. Your hard work. And now, with the help of Hypnospace, you have the tools and the time to make it a reality. Witness the dawning of a new world, where sleep time is no longer downtime. It's where the future is built. A future built by you. Hypnospace. Hypnospace is essentially a late 90s, early 2000s social media community. Something like Bebo or MySpace, but one that users can log into in their sleep by wearing a special headband. You've got involved with HypnoS and you've been hired to work as a Hypnospace enforcer, a sort of moderator who scours the various forums looking for things like copyright infringement, bullying and harassment or illegal activity, and then reporting it to higher ups to get it removed from Hypnospace. This is where the detective work comes in. You'll get sent emails detailing infringements that have been reported and it's your job to find them and get them taken down. However, it's not always going to be easy because people engaging in suspicious activity usually want to keep it pretty secret and you'll have to do some sleuthing to find the violations. When you do find an infringement, you select which offence you're reporting and a big satisfying thwack of a gavel comes down to emphasise justice being served. All of the game is told through your virtual computer home screen in Hypnospace, which you can customise with a bunch of fun downloads, the email server where you get given cases and updates, and the actual Hypnospace forums. In one of the early cases, people are illegally using Hypnospace to sell products through a PayPal equivalent called Kappa Cash, rather than using the official Hypnospace currency system. You're tasked with finding vendors using Kappa Cash and banning the payment portals. So how do you do this? Well, it's a web browser, so to navigate you can either click hyperlinks or find pages using the search bar. So you type in Kappa Cash and see what comes up. Now, that might work at first, but as you keep playing, the later missions become trickier to work through. A straight search for the main key term isn't going to dig up any dirt, and this is where the investigating really begins. Maybe a vendor you suspect is using Kappa Cash is now using it on a hidden page that you can't access. But customers have to be able to get there somehow, so what's the process? You look for hints through the pages, maybe finding new key terms to search or other people to look into who might have relevant hyperlinks on their blogs. And hopefully you can find a backdoor to this illegal online shop and shut it down. The puzzles work, the cases make sense, they still have a few of the flaws that I mentioned at the start of the video and I had to use the built-in hint system a couple of times. But overall, I didn't have any big issues with it, and I can't really give a mechanical critique of this game anyway. Though I did think that the hint system did a good job of pushing me through certain sections without taking away all the satisfaction of a solve. But what I loved is how much creativity and interesting stuff there is to find in this weird late 90s social media world. So many individual accounts and pages all wildly different, and reading through them you can tell what these people are like. The teenagers in their rebellious phases, the guy who's a bit too obsessed with one of his hobbies, the woman who you know would be shilling for some multi-level marketing scheme if the game were set in present day, all semi-realistic characters, albeit with exaggerated social media presences and some truly stunning examples of how to do graphic design. Badly. It looks like an early internet page, this looks like the stuff that people would have made, it feels recognisable but also off. There's something surreal about the place and ultimately almost dystopian about the idea of all these people logging on to social media in their sleep. It's heavily atmospheric and I did find myself clicking through these random people's blogs just to see them all even when they were unrelated to any current cases. The game is also filled with details to make Hypnospace feel like an actual program with things like the customisable homepage, virtual pets that I kept killing by forgetting to feed, and at one point I even downloaded a virus that made wave sounds and shook my screen as though it were bobbing over a wave. I had to do tech support within the game to work out how to get rid of this virus, which was hilarious. Easily one of the best artistic details though is the music, which is brilliant. 
Three hours of original soundtrack with atmospheric background music, silly jingles, a huge range of genres and some genuinely quite good songs from the game's fictional bands. It's easily the most eccentric and over-the-top video game soundtrack I've ever heard. It's top quality work from Jay Tholen, who was also the lead designer on the game, and the music goes a long way to adding personality and character to Hypnospace's pages. It's worth listening to for yourself, so let's do it. Hits from the Hypnospace. Starting at number 5, it's the New Year's Eve Millennium Anthem. And celebrating our favourite online social media dream space, our track at number four this week is the funky Hypno Space is Cool. Next up, I guess the fans just don't care that he was caught lip syncing at Cool Fest 99 because his music has still reached number 3 in the charts. It's FRE3ZER with Chill It Right. I'm getting told that actually that last act's name was pronounced Freezer, so my apologies there. At number two, with a recent resurgence in the charts on its 10 year anniversary, it's the best song about shaving you've ever heard. It's The Chowder Man with Ready to Shave. Whiskers growing at the speed light, put the trimmer in the overdrive, thoughts are running through my mind, just the bathroom in the night, spray the shaving cream into my hand. What a beautiful and moving song that was. And so of course that takes us to number one. And there's no prizes for guessing this track for the 153rd consecutive week. Our number one is Granny Cream's Hot Butter Ice Cream. Yeah, okay, that last one is pretty stupid, but it's the internet, a lot of it is stupid. The game starts in early November 1999, and as you solve cases and clean up Hypnospace, the game jumps forward in time. And when it does, it opens up a few more areas of Hypnospace for you to patrol, but also the original pages change. Like they would, the people who made them are going to update things, adding new stories or fixing their page after you ban hammered all their favourite stolen art of Gumshoe Gooper. So a page that started out as a teenage girl shouting to the rooftops about her boyfriend becomes a page letting her friends know that they've broken up. Or the girl whose page about her hobbies and her favourite game Squishers turns into a goodbye letter when her father buys into the conspiracy theory that Squishers is the work of a satanic cult. As you keep revisiting some of these pages to solve cases and start recognising the usernames and seeing all the connections and stories, they start to become more sympathetic characters. Like Carl, at first his blog seems a bit cringy, a guy in his late 40s trying a bit too hard to be cool. It says born to ride in chilleresque font, there's a skeleton popping a wheelie on a motorbike and burning tyre tracks underscoring every paragraph. And then you look a little closer and you see a memorial page for his deceased wife. And when it reaches Christmas, he updates the page saying how he didn't even get the tree out that year, because the holiday just isn't the same without her around. 
these silly pages that you start the game laughing at become people. And just in time for the game to turn a little bit darker in a way that really, it almost always felt like it would. I did play to the end even though it's not completely for me, but I'm glad I did because I wanted to know what happens and I felt that there was a satisfying conclusion and a good end to the game. But I did wish that I was enjoying the gameplay aspect more, and so that brings me on to should you play Hypnospace Outlaw. If you're like me and point and click games aren't your thing, this isn't the game that's going to change your mind. There's nothing different enough about the concepts and the gameplay that would make this stand out to you. But if you do like detective games and you think this unique setting and strange premise sound interesting, then I definitely recommend Hypnospace Outlaw, and I think you'll love it. Yeah.